Hello friends. Hello. Uh, we are all aware of the fact that cash is king, right? So we know that cash is king. Whenever we talk about money, we talk about cash. So when we prepare the financial statements, we heard that there is something called a cash flow statement, right? Yes. So what we'll understand today is about cash flow statement. When we understand about IFRS, under IFRS cash flow statement is a mandatory statement. It is one of the financial statements which is required to be made. Okay? But at the same time, it is the only statement which is not prepared under accrual basis. Okay? And we will understand why. So when we say cash is king, cash flow statement helps us identify how is the business generating money. Okay? So, uh, cash flow statement helps us fill the gap which is left behind under the accrual principle. So, we know that when we prepare financial statements under accrual principle, whether or not you receive the money, you, you book your revenue. Whether or not you have paid your money, you book expenses. So, under different circumstances, there can be a gap which is left behind. Because if the business is not getting any cash, and if they continue to book revenues under accrual principle, there will be a point where the business will show there is a lot of profit but then they will not be able to earn money out of it. Right? They will not be able to generate cash out of it. So the cash flow statement helps us identify just that. Okay? Now whenever we talk about cash flow statements, we use the term cash and cash equivalents. Okay? We say cash and cash equivalents. Let's understand what this is. So when we say cash, we know that cash, it is the currency notes that we talk about. So it includes cash. It includes bank balances. So if I am a business, I am likely to have a current account balance with a bank. So it includes bank balances. Okay? So this is cash. But what is cash equivalent? Cash equivalent means any short term investments that are convertible into cash ok so it means short term investments these investments must be convertible into cash these would be so what are investments let's say if I have invested in a share that is an investment if I have invested in fixed deposits that is an investment if I have invested in recurring deposit that is an investment if I have brought a treasury bill or if I have invested into a liquid mutual fund, that is investment. But then, is equity investment necessarily a short term investment? I don't know. Okay? So, what is a short term investment? A short term investment is something for which the holding period is, is less than 3 months. Okay? That means, if I have invested into a liquid mutual fund, a liquid fund. A liquid fund is something which would have a maturity of less than 3 months. That is, it can be converted into cash in less than 3 months. Okay? But if I have a 5 year fixed deposit, can it be converted into cash in less than 3 months? No. I will have to hold it for 5 years. So that will not be a short term investment. When I am investing in equity shares, I may or may not be able to sell it within the next 3 months. So equity investments would not come under short term investments. Are we okay? And the third is, there should be insignificant risk of changes in value. That means, again, so when we take the example of equity, share, equity shares, equity shares can change in value, right? It can change in value very significantly. But then if I have invested into a liquid fund, there may be a change in value, but that may not be significant. So it should be subjected to insignificant changes in the value. Why am I talking about these? Because these are supposed to be cash and cash equivalent. So we are talking about something which can be converted into money with reasonable certainty. Are we okay? Yes. Can we do a quick recap? So what we have talked about yet is that there is a cash flow statement. Cash flow statement is an integral part of the financial statements. Yes or no? Yes sir. Yes. When we talk about cash flow statements, 
uh, it talks about it is the only statement which is not following the accrual principle okay and when we talk about cash flow statement we generally deal with cash and cash equivalents so cash and cash equivalents includes cash bank balances and short term investments which are less than 3 months old and are easily convertible into cash without significant risk of changes in value okay sir uh, if i have a bank overdraft so uh, how will it reflect in the cash flow statement very very good question so what about bank overdraft so bank balances can be positive or a negative balance as well okay so so we write about bank overdraft here and we will deal with it in a short while okay let me park this question for you okay sir now when we are preparing cash flow statements the cash flow statement has to be prepared in three parts or it is divided into three parts can i run this part yes sir yes. The cash flow statement has to be divided into three parts, which are known as operating activities, investing activities, and and financing activities. Very good. So we all know this part, right? The cash flow statement has to be divided into three parts. Op cash flow from operating activities, cash flow from investing activities, and cash flow from financing activities. We are not going into too much details about about each one of them because we, by and large, understand what these are. But then, just for a quick recap, cash flow from operating activities are activities which come in the day-to-day -day, uh, operations of the business, right? They lead to the generation of profit or loss. So, what can be the items which can be included in operating activities? we can talk about we can talk about talk about purchases sales salary expenses general expenses right mm -hmm. but then would depreciation be included here yes, yes it should sir, be yes sir it will be included but uh... but understand so what we are talking about is cash flow statements and we understood already that cash flow statement only deals in cash and cash equivalents depreciation is a non cash expense right yes, sir. so only because it is a non cash expense we will not include it in the operating act however it depends whether it will actually come in the statement or not depending upon whether you are using the direct method method or the indirect method so we will come to that okay so for now let's let's just understand that operating activities are activities which are uh, which come into the day to day operations of the business which leads to the determination of profit or loss okay what are investing activities investing activities are activities which leads to when the firm invests in, uh, in any other security so let's say if the business has invested into some other uh, equity share or, uh, equity shares of another company so we just took the example of short term investments so uh, investments in equity shares of any other company would not come under short term investments or would not come under cash equivalents but it will come under investing activities okay if i have if the business has given loan to some other business or to some other person the loan is an outflow of cash So that comes under investing activities. When we are given a loan, we are going to get some interest as well. So if we are going to get the interest, the interest is also investing activities. Okay. But understand, what if I am a bank? If I am a bank, would giving away a loan comes under investing activities or operating activities? Very good. It is going to come under operating activities. Why? Because it is the day-to-day -day operations of the business. it is a primary business of the bank to lend money and gain interest out of it so if it is a bank or if the business in the, is in the business of lending money then it comes under operating activities otherwise it would come under investing activities are we clear any questions no sir cool let's now talk about financing activities what are financing activities financing activities are activities which the business is using finances from outside resources for example If the business has raised some equity shares, raised some money through equity shares, if I have come up with an IPO, right? If I issue debentures, I am meaning the business. If we issue debentures, so what is happening? We are raising finance from some other, some other party, from some external party. So that inflow of money is going to come under financing activities. Similarly, if we are paying interest on the funds which we have just raised, for example, we have raised some loans, that would come under. financing activities at the same time again so if i am a bank 
and in the business of lending and receiving money, right? So in that case, it would all come under operating activities. Are we all clear with this? Yes, sir. Right? What is dividend? If I have to pay some dividend, is that coming? It would it come under financing activity, investing, or operating? Financing activity. Financing activity is extremely good. Dividend is paying back to the equity shareholders, so that comes under financing, financing activities. Okay? Are we clear? Yes, sir. Very good. Can I drop this part? Yes, sir. So now we come to there are two methods of preparing cash flow statement. Okay, one is called a direct method, and the other is called the indirect method. Okay, so again we are not going into too much details about direct and indirect method, but these primarily affect the cash flow from operating activities. Okay, when we look at the direct method, we will say. What is the cash generated from the revenues, right? What has been the sales? What is the cash paid to the suppliers, and so on? What is the cash paid to the employees, etc.? So that would be direct method. When we talk about indirect method, we start with profit and loss before the taxes, and then we keep on adding or subtracting what is uh, whatever the income and uh, incomes and expenses are. So, for example, here I would say changes in uh, debtors, changes in creditors, etc. Okay, so we are not going to do much details, but again, just to remind you that IFRS as well as Indian Gap, they all prescribe both the methods. So the company can follow any of these methods to prepare a cash flow statement. Yes, sir. Are we okay? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. It is just a brief recap, and we already understood how to use these methods while preparing a cash flow statement. Yes, okay. Now we come to your question on bank overdraft. Okay. Yes, If we are preparing cash flow statement under the Indian Gap, the Indian Gap says that bank overdraft is going to come under financing activities. Okay. However, IFRS says that if bank overdraft is part of your cash management system. So, what do you mean by cash management system? If you have a very constant uh, changes in your bank balances, which includes getting into bank overdraft, coming back to positive balances, etc., then bank overdraft will form part of your cash and cash equity. Okay. So remember when I wrote about cash equivalent, when I said bank balances, I wrote both positive and negative. So that means bank overdraft will form part of your cash and cash equivalents if and only if it forms part of your cash management system. If it doesn't form part of your cash management system, we will continue to classify this as a financing activity. Okay? Does that answer your question? Yes, sir. Very good. Now. Uh, Let's understand a couple of more differences between what's there in the Indian Gap versus what is there in the IFRS. Okay, we have discussed in some other chapters as well that IFRS prohibits classification of any transaction as an extraordinary item. So under Indian Gap, when we prepare cash flow statement, we can there are some items which are extraordinary items and they have to be separately disclosed in the cash flow statement. However, that cannot happen under IFRS because IFRS prohibits us from disclosing any item as extraordinary. So everything has to be classified under investing, operating, or financing activities only. Okay. Number two, uh, we've talked about interest income, dividend income. Correct. IFRS is more flexible in terms of saying, okay, so if you have paid interest, so let's say interest paid. If we talk about interest received, if we talk about dividend paid, and we talk about dividend received, okay. IFRS says you can classify them under any of the methods. So you can say interest paid could be operating activity or financing activity. So it could be both operating or financing under IFRS. Okay, and I'm rubbing this part because I'm going to use this board. Interest received can be either operating activity or it can be investing activity. Correct? Are you okay? Yes, sir. So it can be investing activity. Dividend paid can be operating or financing activity. Dividend received can be operating or investing activity. 
okay so i for this is flexible the indian gap says that you have to classify whether it is a financing company or other than financing company okay financing company or financial enterprise if it is a financing company these would be operating i just made a mistake dividend paid would never be operating activity okay yes okay but then if it is other than financing company we have to follow this so other than financing company interest paid will be a financing activity dividend received would be an investing activity yes. dividend paid would in any case be financing yes. activity dividend received would be investing activity okay so the indian gap requires us to classify what kind of an enterprise are we and accordingly classify the items okay the ind as continues to follow what the indian gap is saying so even under the ind as we will have to follow this guidance now if you notice if you are following this guidance we will automatically follow what is there under ifrs right because ifrs gives you a choice they are not giving you a choice but you are anyways complying with what is mentioned in the ifrs the only requirement under ifrs is that <coughs> whatever method you follow you have to be consistent from period to period okay does it answer? do you have any questions at all no sir are you okay yes sir fair enough. the last part is the foreign currency now when we are preparing cash flow statement we have to take into account all the foreign currency transactions and they would have to be converted into the functional currency at the date of preparing cash flow statement okay unrealized changes in the financing financial unrealized changes in value due to the foreign exchange is not accounted for because it is not cash but then any realized differences in the foreign exchange would come under the cash flow statement are you okay yes sir and as we all know that the functional currency is the currency in which we are reporting the financial statements okay yes sir so what we want which understood today is about cash flow statement which is ias 7 okay and we said that cash flow statement deals in cash and cash equivalents we understood that cash and cash equivalents includes cash bank balances we clarified that bank balances would include bank overdraft if it is part of the cash management system under ifrs though it is not the same under indian gap it includes short term investments which is less than 3 months of uh, which is less than 3 months of maturity and are easily convertible into cash and do not have significant risk of changes in value we have understood that cash flow statement are prepared in three parts so it is operating activities investing activities and financing activities operating activities are something which is in the day to day business Investing activities where the business is investing and earning some return, which is not principal activity of the business. Financing activities where the business is raising some money, so it includes raising equity shares or is sorry, issuing debentures, issuing equity shares, getting loans, long term loans, etc. So those would be all financing activities. Then we want to show that there are two methods of preparing cash flow statement. One is a direct method, and the other is an indirect, indirect method. And then we said we have identified some major differences between Indian gap and IFRS. So under Indian gap and IFR, as you said, interest paid, interest received, dividend paid, dividend received may have different treatments. So I hope this is clear with with each one of you. Yes. Okay. We want to we also recall that under Indian gap we have something called an extraordinary item, but IFR is prohibits the usage of extraordinary items or classifying anything as extraordinary item. We also understood about foreign exchange rate. Okay. Yes. Is there any question at all? No sir. Thank you so much.